You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts on Netroots Radio or on our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for October 29th, 2021. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we're dressing up as Matthew Dow's deleted tweets for Halloween, because there's nothing scarier than when your inconvenient past comes knocking at your door. It's the professional left with Drip Glass and Blue Gal. Yeah, give us some shit you said about Hillary. Woo. Oh my God, you called me an idiot. Woo. No, I didn't. That never happened. It's all deleted now. And we'll talk about that more later. But now. I just want to say happy birthday, Drift Glass. Well, thank you, darling. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's tomorrow. It's well, Saturday. It's Saturday. Saturday but... is Drift Glass's birthday. Yes, it is. It is my birthday. And one of our listeners already gave us champagne. Champagne. To celebrate. Yeah, actual champagne. So champagne for our real friends, as the saying goes. Yeah, and, <laughs> and we're we're grateful for that. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you very much. And we've got uh, a lot to talk about today. Well, I, and I should let everyone know I'm doing a birthday fundraiser mm-hmm. uh, at my site, and and since uh, the new blogger, the new improved blogger, is incredibly um, kludgy and hard to use, they took out all the fun stuff. Um, it's as I described on my, on my website, uh, trying to, uh, carve a cameo with a burnt stump. Oh. Um, I decided just to focus on, uh, bringing back 2015 for you. Mm. Uh, and I focused on this week, this period of the year in 2015, because it's before the election It's a year before the election and what was going on back then. And Is that the escalator ride? No, no, this was, well, no. this was after that. This is the, oh. I, I focused specifically on, I had got like over 10,000 posts in my archives, which freaks me out. Mm -hmm. Um, So I focused on the October, November period. And this is the Hillary Clinton hearing. Oh, the 11 hour hearing. This is the Trey Gowdy, burn the witch and driver poll number down hearing. Yep. Uh, This is when CNBC decided to let Donald Trump dictate the terms of the Republican debates. Mm -hmm. This Mm -hmm. is when Donald Trump discovered he didn't have to spend any money because all he had to do was be racist in public. And people would send him millions of dollars to yeah. run for president. Yeah. And this was about the time that that our hair was collectively on fire on the left saying, this is what the right has come to. This is the day. The day is coming. This is what we told you was coming. This is the Republican base. And uh, I don't want to spoil 2015 for you by telling you how it ends, but it's got a shocking ending that will yeah. surprise you. <laughs> uh, so I'm pulling uh, some posts from that era. And just re, re, uh, reposting them to remind us where we were, what lessons we might have learned, if any, and how far we've come in some I cases. have a couple of brief responses to what you've said so far in our podcast sure. today. One is, it is universally acknowledged that Google wants to get rid of Blogger and they can't because too many people are on yes. it. They're just making it painful They're to be They're just making on. it difficult for people to be on it, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, and secondly, you know, I, I have to admit that... I I am not someone who thought Donald Trump would make it to the Republican nomination, nor did I think he would win the 2016 election. Yep. And I told my mother, you know, at this at this time, it was Halloween. Yeah. 2016. Uh, uh, that she died that mm-hmm. weekend and that week. And uh, yeah, I told her she was so worried that. Trump was going to win. Yeah. And she died like two days before election day, two or three days before election day. I was so glad she didn't know that this happened. Yep. Um, but I reassured her, oh, no, no, no. I think it's going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, and, and, and you were right. Hillary Clinton won the popular vote. He, of course. Yeah. Of course she did. But this was, um, uh, and I, I thought, uh, first of all, I wrote, uh, I, I don't know if I'll post this or not, like, 12 hours after he came down the escalator, I wrote Mm -hmm. a long post about this is the base come to life. Mm -hmm. This Mm -hmm. is the, the Republican party. And I meet all the never Trumpers and all the bill crystals and all the Rick Wilson's, all of these assholes built a perfect feeding ground for a grifter like this. Perfect. He is the, he is the base that they have created animated now come to life with a lot of money behind him. But my theory was 
the GOP establishment that David Brooks put so much faith in would simply bribe him. Would, I thought that too. The, yeah. the, 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 I the, thought Reince Priebus would find a way to work with Rupert Murdoch to give yeah. him what he really wanted, which was a lot of money in his own show. Yeah, give him a billion dollars in his own show on Fox. Yeah. And pay off all of his debts and put him, put him on Fox. I thought, yeah. because I thought this guy thought really- thought had enough self-preservation yeah. to want to well, do that. I, I <laughs> underestimated the 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 brain cast of the GOP's ability to comprehend the danger they were in and the mm-hmm. monster they'd mm-hmm. created, mm-hmm. even though the left had been telling them the monster is coming for decades. And they didn't mm-hmm. believe it, and they didn't believe it, and they wouldn't believe it. And up until the last fucking minute, they thought, eh, it'll be Rubio, it'll be Cruz, that'll be bad, but it won't be that bad. And even a year after Trump is elected, they're still like, well, we can cope with this. We can put guardrails up. We, you know, we can we can work through this. And and we were just on on the left, the people who have been right all along, right all along, were just like, what the fuck do we have to do to call your attention to the fact that we have given you the Selden plan for mm-hmm. how this is going to work? And all you have to do is look at what we've been telling you, and you will know what's to come and what to do. No, no, we'd rather listen to you know Charlie Sykes. Um, but that's the problem. I assumed that these rich racist billionaires would have the smarts to just buy him off. Cause he, right. the only thing that, that, that bribing Trump is easy. <laughs> Everybody did it. Mm-hmm. So why not just throw money at him, give him a program and have him get out of the way and then take all of that lovely racist energy. Cause everybody was racing to be number two. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like, okay, I can be racist too, but not get back, you know, 1%. Um, I can I can talk about the left being child murdering monsters and Planned Parenthood chopping up little babies, but I'm not as bad as Trump. And like you people don't understand your own party. Mm-hmm. Why don't you listen to people who do understand your party, who've been telling you who these people are all along? And that just it I, I've said this before, they would rather pull their own heads off than ever admit at the time that we knew what we were talking about, and now that we were right all along, they would rather walk well, off a cliff. Well, and now they're spending a whole lot of time and energy to make sure that Democrats are blamed for everything. Oh, sure, sure, and, sure, sure. And this, this is anyway. It's been a rough week, folks. It has been a rough week. <laughs> and I'll, I'll cap it off with this: this happened just before we went live, so I'll just, I'll yeah. just mention this. I do listen to the Bulwark podcast. Uh, the guest today is Tom Nichols. And after reciting a long list of paranoia and conspiracy mongering and and horrible shit and violence that the that has been done by the Republican Party, by the Republican base, all predictable stuff, he concludes with, it's amazing the degree to which the right has become the left. Because they can't not hate us. What? And he was comparing the uh, MAGA movement to the weathermen. Weathermen. So right? he's going back about 50 years mm-hmm. and skipping and over the entire- we had, a pres- we had our own president in the weatherman, didn't we? Right. Oh, yeah. Well, I remember when <laughs> Abby Hoffman was president. Remember All those that? anti-war people remember had their that? own- Oh, their, their own party. Cabinet they had their own, members. And... They had their own TV station, their own yeah. radio station, their own TV. And Rupert Murdoch, young Rupert Murdoch, was pouring billions of dollars into building them an empire. They had their own book publishing industry. Mm-hmm. No, they were they were around for a few years, then they died off, and nobody, nobody elected these people. Nobody put them anywhere near a government office. Many of them went to big boy prison for yes. a long time. And yes. most of them had the good sense not to put their shit on Facebook where right. the FBI could find them. <laughs> um, but- the point being that it is impossible for someone who is, is hardwired to defines himself by contempt for people like us mm-hmm. to admit that this is his fucking party and he had a role in building. It's like, uh, no, they're just like the weathermen. They're just like the left now. And he has to reach back to when he, he was like to nine. Back to, to when I was well, a child. Yeah, when yes. he was, well, when he was nine years old. Yeah. So, oh, hey, Tom. He's what our f- age. Yes. Right. So, yes. Tom, what the fuck's been going on for the last, I don't know, 50 years in your party? And his answer is, well, I was in Massachusetts. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> like, and your and your, your, your expertise you're is- for your political expertise. Right. Yes. And your book is all about being an expert in shit and why people should listen to experts in shit. Well, what about your right? I don't know nothing about that, man. Why are you on television? Oh, uh, because, you know, uh, Brian my Williams likes- let me come on. To sell Brian Williams yeah. has the softest, smoothest lips in town. That's why mm-hmm, I'm on television. Mm-hmm, and it's so mm-hmm. soothing when he blows me. So that's why I'm on television. Anyway, I'm getting off topic because the first matter we should be discussing today is our book report. We have book reports to we give do. you. And, and we are going to talk a little bit about the uh, triumphs and failures this week in, in 
Washington. But um, one of the ways we've stayed sane this week, Mm -hmm. I think we can agree, is uh, to read good literature. Yeah. Read good books. And I've been reading, uh, I like to read the uh, Booker Prize shortlist and uh, pick books off of that. I, uh, I, I finished Margaret Atwood's The Testaments, which won the Booker Prize uh, recently. Um, this year's Booker Prize will be announced on November 3rd. So that's in the coming week. Um, and one of the odds on favorites to win is the book I'm reading right now called Bewilderment, which is a novel by Richard Powers. Um, he also wrote The Overstory, uh, if you're familiar with that book. Um, this book, I'm only a little bit of the way into it, but it is about a father and son who go camping. And the son is, uh, as they say, on the spectrum. Um, one of the things that I amuses me about this book, and it it's a very emotional book, but um, one of the things that kind of amuses me, I studied in graduate school um, 19th century novels that were very Christian. This was at Divinity School. Um, very Christian, very instructional to uh, white women in their mm-hmm. homes. Yeah. Uh, this is the, you know, romance novels of the day. But boy, did they have a lot of pray to Jesus. The heroine is constantly praying to Jesus and looking mm-hmm. for religious Christian, always Christian uh, motivations and you know, what the next step is. And the next step is always to find a husband and so forth and so on. One of the things that is a constant theme in these 19th century novels is the sainted dead mother. (laughs) SDM, sainted dead mother (laughs) who gives the daughter a Bible or a prayer before she dies and goes to heaven. Mm -hmm. And um, Powers, I don't know if ever, anyone else has noticed this or not, but the sainted dead mother is a definite trope in this book because the mother's gone. Well, Irish culture is built on it. So yeah. you know. <laughs> the sainted dead mother, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's a little different. And so I'm going to read just uh, less than a page from this book. Uh, fair use, fair use. Um, the boy and his father that are camping every night, they end the night with the mother's prayer. Um, that she gave them. And that is so 19th century novel to do that. Um, But it's with a twist. Uh, The father says to the son, they're in a tent and he says, Hey, mister, we forgot. May all sentient beings. And the son says, be free from needless suffering. Where does that come from anyway? I mean, before mom, I told him it came from Buddhism, the four immeasurables. (laughs) There are four good things worth practicing. Being kind toward everything alive, staying level and steady, feeling happy for any creature anywhere that is happy, and remembering that any suffering is also yours. Was mom a Buddhist? I laughed, and he slugged my arm through two sleeping bags. Your mother was her own religion. When she said something, it was worth saying. When she spoke, everybody listened, even me. Half a vowel trickled out of him and he hugged himself. Some large forager snapped twigs on the slope above our tent. Smaller creatures rooted through the leaf layer. Bats mapped the canopy in frequencies beyond our ears. But nothing troubled my son. When Robin was happy, he had all the four immeasurables covered. She once told me that no matter how much bad stuff she had to deal with during the day, if she said those words before bed, may all sentient beings be free from needless suffering, she'd be ready for anything the next morning. Well, lovely writing. Yes. You know, just as a brief aside, you should know this. Uh, in our house, in our household, um, I'm letting our, our uh, listeners in on a dark and terrible secret of our home. <laughs> Um, occasionally, maybe twice a day, um, or more or less frequently, you will hear one of us say to the other, Hey, let me read you something. <laughs> and often it has nothing to do with anything other than the, the pure, um, beauty of what it is we're reading. Mm-hmm. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's right on topic. It's like, Oh, this, we can put this in the podcast. That's what's coming up from me. Yeah. But yeah, more often than not, it's just, this is gorgeous writing. Mm-hmm. And memorable. And mm-hmm. you know, I'd like to share this with you because it's a thing of beauty. Mm-hmm. And it's stuck in the middle of these two pages here. And, and of course, you know, 
every, we both stop and listen and appreciate because, you know, that's what we do. This is our house. You know, this is <laughs> this is how we. Uh, this isn't a sh- this isn't a performance. No. This is a this is an artificial construct, and it's an hour or so long, and we have a microphone, we have notes. But this really is what we think and believe and how we do and how we conduct and our lives. And this is what our house is like. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. You know, this is our relation. You're, you're listening to a bit of our relationship. Yeah. And you could have, when we were off to lunch with a listener who came to town yesterday and gifted us with some lovely champagne, um, you could have put a microphone in the middle of the table. Right. And it would have been a perfectly um, legitimate episode of this podcast. It would we not just, have surprised any listener. No. No, no. Not at all. Um. <laughs> we do try to constrain ourselves a little bit to, you know, uh, nothing but, you know, we don't, we, we don't do nothing but rip and read today's news. You can get right. that anywhere and we urge you to do so. There's lots of good people who do that. Or but, urge you not to, if you need to take a break. Right. right. <laughs> but, but we think we offer something unique and different and distinctive to our house and our, our, our values and what we're doing and how we live our lives. Now, see, and, I thought the direction you were going to go in with that conversation was, in our house, we have a sainted mother. Oh, yeah. No, we do. <laughs> we have a sainted mother and the spirits of our sainted mothers hovering over the house um, because both of our mothers were saints. That's right. And, and so, yeah, no. I thought I mean, you were talking about me, too. Well, of course. But, you know, <laughs> I mean, just, just kidding. <laughs> just watch my wife move from one room to another and watch the caravan of cats that follow oh, yeah. her everywhere she goes. Yeah. And if, the, like if the kids are home, it's the same thing. Where's mom? Where's you mom? Know, where's is mom, mom okay? is a constant Are you okay? Thing. Is everything okay? Yeah. And, you know, is it, it's okay to be independent and distant and call every now and then. And you know, when you show up in town, you, you drop by if you can and because you have other things to do. But let there be a disturbance in the mom force and the universe comes to a stop. <laughs> it does. It does. Like, mind, everything yep. stops. Yep. Yes. And, uh, and that is, you know, that is as it should be. Um, so tell us about the book you're reading. Cause this well, is the same book you were reading last week. I was reading last week and I, I'm going through it. I'm savoring it. I'm going through it, you know, uh, a little bit a, a day. Uh, this is still uh, the reason for the darkness of the night. Edgar Allan Poe and the forging of American science by John, John Tresh. Um, and this portion right here is about a guy named, uh, Phineas Taylor Barnum, who was P.T. Barnum, who was living in New York at the time and a few blocks away from Edgar Allan Poe. And uh, this is before he founded Barnum and Bailey Circus. And he's, he's trading in hoaxes and conspiracies and, and working them in such a way that he plays both sides of them. He'll ask, is it, is it science? Is it a hoax? I don't know. Why don't you come, come give me money and figure it out for yourself? It's very much I report, you decide kind of things. And he's happy enough to live in the controversy as long as that controversy is making him money. And I'm reading now from page 218, if anybody wants to buy the hardback. Barnum was advancing an extreme form of charlatanism that Bakke and Henry, two other scientists, saw as the enemy of their scientific aims. While he diffused uncertainty and disagreement among a broad audience, they aimed to concentrate scientific certainty and authority in a few hands. For Bakke and Henry, any public display of science risked being dragged down to the level of a carnival, jubilee, revival, or town hall meeting. Worst of all, from their perspective, Barnum encouraged his low-paying crowds to think that their opinions mattered in questions of scientific truth. The conditions of persuasion were changing in the United States through the expansion of, see if this sounds familiar, commercial culture, High intensity evangelism and the regular combat of political campaign. That was, it's Fox News. Yeah, <laughs> it's 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 one American news network. It's Fox News without the threat to democracy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's definitely that kind of look. We know what the mob wants. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, they want a bearded lady. They want a midget. Uh, they want freaks. They want the dog faced boy. They want to. They want. Uh, they want the grotesque. And they want some explanation to lift them out of their pathetic little lives. And I'm going to give that to all to them. And then I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask the question, the Neil Cavuto question. I'm just asking the question, is this mermaid real or is it not? And when one guy actually showed how the fake mermaid was made, Barnum was thrilled because it's like, mm-hmm. great. Yeah, I, that's more clicks for me. Right. You know, <laughs> that's more audience for me. And just to, this is to say that nothing in human nature ever really changes. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and what you're seeing now, which is terrifying and we should be alarmed by it and we should take action against it and we should vote and we should march, all those things, is nothing new. Mm-hmm. There have yeah. always been hoaxers and there's always been people who are willing to just lie to the public uh, in big, grand, spectacular, shiny ways to make them 
um, think whatever they want them to think, to bring money to the door and make these people rich. And P.T. Barnum became a very rich man doing exactly what it is Fox News does every day, mm-hmm. minus the uh, deleterious effects to democracy. So uh, take a little heart in the fact that what you're watching happening around you is human nature in action. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. people like us have always had people like them to contend with and get furious about and worry that their insanity will overtake the the good sense of people like us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. End of story. Can I skip ahead in our notes for a minute to of quote course. from what Howard Dean said? Yeah, um, yeah. He was reacting to uh, Ted Cruz's little game uh, in the hearing with um, the attorney general and um, Merrick Garland. Mm-hmm. The Merrick Garland hearing, which was on Wednesday, and Ted Cruz did a little trick where he asked the attorney general, is giving the Hitler salute at a school board meeting protected by the First Amendment? And of course, Merrick Garland had to say, yes, it is. You know, mm-hmm. that's not a threat. But that <laughs> and and that was a yes or no question. You know, no one in the in the Biden White House is going to say that that's an appropriate thing to do at a school board meeting. No. Of course not. And uh, but but Ted Cruz moved right along, giving comfort to Nazis. Yeah, you know you're, you're you have protected speech. That was his point. Was I get to make a clip? As uh, Carolee said on her podcast, it's all about making clips for Hannity at these hearings. Yeah, that's all it is. That's all that Republicans want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so Howard Dean was on the beat with Ari Melber uh, Wednesday night, and he said that basically. Ted Cruz doesn't belong in the Senate. And there's a lot of them that just don't belong in public office because they do this performative bullshit that doesn't, and he doesn't say that on TV, but the performative casual racism is the point of their television performances. Mm -hmm. He said, one of the reasons that Warnock and Ossoff are in the Senate, this is quoting him now, is because the voters of Georgia got fed up with this. And then it's right wing performative racism nonsense. People are sick of this. Normal, ordinary, good Americans are sick of it, and they blame the far right and Trump and Ted Cruz and DeSantis and Greg Abbott and all these wingnuts who know better for the most part and are simply catering to the worst instincts of human beings, and it's wrecking the country, and we're not going to put up with it anymore. There's a solid majority that are fed up with it. Right. From from Howard Dean's mouth to the election god's ears. And the, the entire... Republican strategy going back decades yeah, um, has been, we don't care what the majority wants. The majority is an no. inconvenience. We don't want people voting. It yeah. doesn't, it, it, we want to live in a world where it doesn't matter what the majority wants. We are mm-hmm. so locked in. We mm-hmm. have found all of the, the, um, the, the uh, faults in the fence. We found all the flaws in the system. We've hacked the system to the point where you can't stop us. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what 70% of the country thinks. Fuck them. It doesn't matter. We have, 51 senators we can do whatever mm-hmm. we want we have we have spent our lifetimes and i mean well, when we have the, 50 senators we will we will use the minority power to block everything oh no we'll use if we have you know if we have 41 senators yeah because yeah. we'll just fill, we'll just filibuster everything this is the history of the obama administration mm-hmm. we will filibuster mm-hmm. everything we'll obstruct everything and then we will say that, that obama doesn't get anything done mm-hmm. and when he tries to do something by executive order or by special action we'll say see he's a tyrant don't don't you hate tyrants? Is, aren't tyrants bad? Isn't that black yes. man who's a tyrant a bad man? By look God, he wasn't even born here. He has. I yeah. had to look up. I had to look up czar. And it all depends. <laughs> it all depends on a P.T. Barnum understanding mm-hmm. of the stupidity of the mob. Yeah, that they're willing to just swallow this shit because it makes them feel smart. And yeah. nothing. No makes... one hates. No one hates MAGA more than the Fox News host. No, but... they they absolutely think they're idiots. Right. And play them every day. And and listening to this sort of arbitrary start date for all this from people like Tom Nichols and Charlie mm-hmm. Sykes, who, you know, this all started in 2016. And I, who do these people think they are? I don't even know these people. I know who these people are, Tom. I know exactly who these people are. The same, let's own the libs despite the fact that it r- might wreck the Constitution thing that you hate now. Mm-hmm. Your party was doing to Bill Clinton in the 90s. Right. Don't you remember – that we're just going to keep digging and digging and bombing and bombing and slandering and lying until we find something to destroy this man. It's That's... like Glenn Beck on Fox never existed. Right. And it it is, it's because it's so embarrassing yeah. to people who make their living now 
pontificating on cable news to admit that their past exists. Mm -hmm. And people who have the receipts must be kept away. They must be kept away. Um, Because, you know, I'm reminded of To Kill a Mockingbird. Mm -hmm. Gregory Peck at the trial, you know, saying that 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 the man is the evidence and that he must be kept away from me. He must be Mm -hmm. kept away. Liberals must be kept away from the microphones because they'll spoil everything. Because we've got this really great scam going on where we are now the voice of the reasonable people in America. We're now the trusted authority. And if you start bringing liberals into the conversation who say, I can go, you, I can walk you back to 1964 mm-hmm. when you mm-hmm. were two. Mm-hmm. What's your excuse for not knowing what the fuck your party was doing? That's your only fucking job. We can't have people like that allowed anywhere near the microphone. Which brings us to my friend and yours, candidate Matthew Dowd. <laughs> candidate for lieutenant governor uh, in Texas. And uh, a person who is has wrapped who the media has wrapped its arms around and said, don't worry, Matt, we're not going to let any scary liberals ask you any questions about any shit you were doing for the last 13 years. Um, And I bring this up because uh, Matthew Dowd had an article written about him in Vanity Fair. Uh, A gentleman named Chris Smith, who's the managing editor of, of, uh, a managing editor of Vanity Fair magazine, has written an article about Mr. Dowd's campaign for governor. And in the space of one sentence... He leaps right over. Uh, He starts with Dowd's disenchantment with his party that Republicans is not new. He split with Bush loudly and publicly in 2007 over the handling of the Iraq war. And then one breath later, there's a lot of distance from W to MAGA. And this guy sums up Matthew Dowd's entire 13 year history leading up to right now with he spent most of the next decade as an independent consultant and TV commentator before becoming a Democrat. And that's it. That's it. And what infuriates me is that these people keep failing at the basic job of journalism, Mm -hmm. which is asking public figures running for public office questions about their past. Really Mm -hmm. basic questions. Mm -hmm. Like, why did you delete 170,000 tweets? (laughs) What, what? I have a list of things here you said about what the things you love, the things you support, the things you're in favor of. Uh, you're you're hugely in favor of um, uh, gun control, and you're in favor of a woman's right to choose, and you're and you think somebody should be done on climate, and that, that that's a long list of things. You know who else thought all those things? Hillary Clinton. In fact, your campaign is a carbon fucking copy of Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign for president. And what were you saying about Hillary Clinton? You must be have been a huge fan of hers. How did you use your huge platform on ABC News to promote Hillary Clinton's candidacy, given the fact that your campaign is an identical carbon copy of her campaign? Oh, what? You called you you called her a liar <laughs> and you said she's no worse than Trump and you shouldn't vote for either of these assholes and on and on and on and on and on. And you did it month after month, year after year. Why? Matthew, why did you do such things? This to me is a basic journalistic question to ask of anyone running for office. And the fact that everyone he knows in the media has agreed not to ask him anything is what makes me lose hope in the media completely. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of hope in the American people. I have a lot of hope in the voters. I have a lot of a lot of trust in Stacey Abrams. But the fact that there is such a conspiracy among the good people in the media to protect their friends and silence people who have contrary opinions, mm-hmm. legitimate contrary opinions, not that lizard people run the country. That mm-hmm. opinion does not belong on television, but an opinion like, wait a minute, this shit did not start in 2016. This shit started in 1964. And don't you think we should talk about how we got to where we are? Um, the fact that that is entirely silenced. This is, in my mind, this is the equivalent of turning the cameras away from the Iraq war protesters. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. we don't want to know that there's a dissenting opinion out there. And we don't want to know how many people believe the dissenting opinion. And we don't want to risk asking them about their opinion because it might turn out they're right and then all of us look like idiots so we're just going to pretend well, they don't and exist. all of us meaning people on that side of the camera that yeah. you actually see on television we all own stock in those companies right. that are making money hand over fist we're all complicit war. yeah and so we're not gonna and once it turns out that those those crowds were right we're just going to get very quiet for a, mm-hmm. a while and we're all going to agree that this was a bad idea and no one really knows who's to blame or how it happened or whatever let's just move on to the future Let's move on to the next thing in, in line. Um, there are a lot of things to be mad about. 
yeah. this week and mm-hmm. and always. You know, I'm always mad. Is mm-hmm. you know, we're all we're all the Incredible Hulk. We're all the point. Hulk, yes. Um, but I I just can't get past the fact that the U.S. Senate approved five percent more for the Pentagon than Biden asked for. Yeah, and nobody said one shitty word about pay for no taxation I... because they all own stock in mm-hmm. Northrop Grumman. Nobody, nobody turned their pockets out and said, "But we got no money." Yeah. Man, what don't you don't you think that this this military you don't want to be an entitlement society? Yeah. Don't you or, think this this military welfare program has gotten yeah. way out of hand? I mean, we're spending twice as much on that as we are yeah, on climate Boeing, change. Right? Boeing yeah. shouldn't have an entitlement society, but Boeing yeah. does have an entitlement society. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And not not a single mum- well, I can't say not a single mumbling word was said. A lot of people talked about it, but it never bubbled up to the surface. Yeah. The people who who own the cameras never talked about it. People yeah. who own the cameras never talked about the fact that that twice as much is spent every year on the Pentagon than is that, that is proposed to be spent on the on, well, on Main Street. Yeah. On, well, on on the Biden program that is currently being chopped and chopped and chopped and chopped right. by two assholes who right. don't who are in the in the who pocket don't, of who don't want the American dental lobby to be unhappy with right. giving seniors coverage for dentures. I and mean that's who are protecting the who are protecting the four people still working in the coal industry in West right. Virginia. Right, right. So, and, and that's that's the system we have. I'm not, I'm not. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no magic wand is screaming about Democrats should, Democrats must. This is the thing that that always cracks me up. Mm-hmm. The two the two little words that always make me laugh. Should. <laughs> um, you know, EJ Dion had a long column in in our local paper this week that the headline began with GOP should. I just stopped reading right there mm-hmm. because why mm-hmm. fucking bother? Why are you writing a column? And it, it, why are you writing a column that's an extended rhetorical question about a shit you know will never happen? Well, because I have to fill up space. And because if I, if I start writing about, you know, what an awful schnook David Brooks is, um, that'll be my last day on the job. So, OK, well, we're going to get on to more of that in a minute. Um, I want to I want to talk about my hero, Ellie Mistal. I was going to say, I would love to hear you talk about Ellie Mistal um, because he is one of those people that gives me hope every time he, he opens does. his mouth. He's one of the like, people oh. that gives me hope, too. Oh. And he was on C-SPAN. I highly recommend that you look up either my post on his appearance on C-SPAN on Tuesday, um, Monday. Maybe it was Monday. I don't remember. <laughs> I have blur. Crooks and Liars. Go to Crooks and Liars. Go to Crooks and Liars and look up Ellie Mistal C-SPAN. You'll find it. Ellie Mistal was on C-SPAN for half an hour talking about abortion and the Supreme Court and uh, the filibuster, et cetera, et cetera, and taking calls from listeners. Right. And- he was just on fire, as he always is. He was so, so good. But the the first call that he got, and the one that I put up, um, was from a woman who said she was 57 years old, and when she was in her 20s, she had an abortion, and she has spent the rest of her life asking the Lord to forgive her for what she did. And it broke my heart, because she never asked, what about the man who got me pregnant against my will? Right. Um. So Ellie Mistal, she what she wanted was she wanted Ellie Mistal to give her a Ten Commandments version of the Constitution. Right. Tell me where in the Constitution it says uh, it's okay to fill in the blank, kill murder babies, babies. Blah, murder blah, blah, them blah, babies, murder, right. murder, 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 blah blah blah. Right. 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 Um, and so she's and and I'm got pencil and paper here, and I'm going to hang up. I'm going to listen to you, and I'm going to go look it up. Mm-hmm. Where it says it's okay to do this because I think it's just been crammed in by liberals. And I, just, just as an aside, yeah, I carry a copy of the Constitution around with me, a mm-hmm. pocket edition that the ACLU sends to our yeah. house every year. Right. Um, the Constitution is not the Lord of the Rings trilogy. <laughs> it isn't. It, it is a very brief document. Yeah. And this stupid woman could look this shit up herself. You could go to Google and it, it'll take it an hour to read. It's it's easy. It's the owner's manual for the country in which you live. But, but people rather, think it's the Alabama Constitution, which is like eight hundred and seventy one no. pages. And you that's because of you know that's because of racism. That's because of racism. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, but the the U.S. Constitution amendments and everything. Um, yeah. It will take it just you can breeze through booklet. it. Yeah. And if you have questions, you can you can look it up. But the idea that I'm going to call in C-SPAN, I'm going to ask this scary man to tell me where in the Constitution. Like, 
and then he does. Uh, now, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. He, he but the gave idea... her four amendments and yeah. the right to privacy and brought up the 13th Amendment, which is, you know, the amendment against slavery. Mm hmm. That you, the government cannot force a woman to engage in labor. Um, uncompensated. And, uh, right. Yeah, uncompensated labor mm -hmm. for the government's interest or for the economy's interest. We're not, women are not broodmares. Mm -hmm. And this is about what the government can force women to do. That's yes. what it's about. Exactly. And uh, and then he also brought up later the the fact that the same framework by which Roe v. Wade was decided, decided the earlier case on birth control. That's right. And if you think they're not coming for your birth control, brace yourselves. Yeah, because birth control they is just pre-abortion. They want to control women. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, and absolutely. conservatives always want to control women. Mm -hmm. And and this, is, this gets me back to Matthew Dowd. And everywhere you scratch these lies and this, this uh, covering up and, you know, looking at the... January 6th insurrectionists, the the percentage of them that are involved in domestic violence, it's all about misogyny. There's, it is a thread that runs through the whole thing. Um, so, yeah, so he uh, brought that up, that, that this is also about birth control. And then another man called in and said, well, I believe the Lord this, and do you believe God gives us all of our rights? And he said, nope. <laughs> nope, God doesn't give us rights. No. Nope. I can tell you that as a black man, God didn't give me rights for a long, no. long time. <laughs> take it up, take it up with the Exodus yeah. in the Bible. Yeah. God did not give anybody. The, do we have a right of assembly? Do we have a right of free speech? And no, 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 God, no. no. And then <laughs> Ellie Mostel had a uh, caller named Paul who wa also wanted to rail about abortion, and uh, Ellie said, "Yeah, I definitely think Paul should not have an abortion." <laughs> the government should not force Paul to have an abortion no, ever. No, that's great. And and he also did a wonderful, you know, pure Bible bitch moment of this guy who, you know, believed in good Christian values and didn't want his money spent on health care. And he sort of lost it and said, dude, the entire basis of your religion is charity. <laughs> The right. entire basis of your religion is taking care of people who are poorer than you. Yeah, poor that's prisoners. What that's what your savior taught you to do. Yeah. I, I got a copy of his book right here. Right you want me here. To read? I'll read it right here. <laughs> so anyway, he was marvelous. Um, do you mind if I skip right over to Casey Hunt? Oh, no, please, please. Uh, this is, you know, the worst tweet of the day about the Biden package and, and what we're going to get and what we're not going to get. It was came from Casey Hunt. CNN paid Casey Hunt uh, said, if paid leave is left out of this bill, I'm going to spend the midterms covering how suburban women who turned on the GOP over Trump are responding to Democratic governing in D.C., especially after the pandemic. And this Ellie Mistel replied to this on Twitter and said, oh, is making threats how this works now? Cool. Let me try. If voter suppression bills are allowed to stand, I'm going to spend the midterms covering how white people in the media don't give a shit about democracy. <laughs> and oh. I loved how one commenter replied to Ellie and said, wouldn't you do that anyway? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he replied to that and said she was going to do her thing anyway also. Absolutely. She's going to be she's going to be interviewing white suburban women who she's going to claim are disinterested independent voters mm -hmm. and anyone who goes in and scratches the surface on those women is going to find out they're republican operatives oh yeah I, Casey didn't tell her tell no, us anything they, about they how do. long they've been republican women's club finance chairman for bush finance mm -hmm. chairman for romney finance chairman for trump right so but they're know, just, that's how it works. And we know that's how it works. They're just white ladies who are mad that the Democrat Party yeah. has abandoned <laughs> women. Like, yeah, OK. Uh, what about the Republican Party again? I mean, yeah. you, have a, you have unanimity on one side and two assholes holding up everything else on the other. So which mm -hmm. party do you think is more likely? You have 50 votes on one side voting no, including right. the women, which just shocks right. me. Right. And, and you have 48 voting yes on the other side and two that are being awful. So so which party do you think 
if you did a little bit more work on, you could actually get what you want. Which which do you suppose is your better bet for you know putting your labor into it? I mean, they're both. I'm they're sorry, both, I have to go play golf now. I'm sorry, I have a meeting <laughs> of the ladies Republican. I a meant Republican to say independent ladies fundraising committee. Yes, yes we're right. independent auxiliaries. <laughs> and <laughs> as I asked last week, if every Republican, if I'm sorry, if every Democrat in the universe is responsible uh, for the actions of two asshole Democrats, mm-hmm. which I've been told 1,000 times by by never Trumpers and centrists and, and blah, 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 independents. Is every independent out there responsible for everything Glenn Beck says and does? Yeah. Because Glenn Beck is an independent. He declares himself to be an independent. So if all Democrats are responsible for each Democrat, are all independents responsible for each independent? What about Republicans? Or, well, Republicans are just a different species at this point. I don't have to yeah. worry about them. But if, because it, and it gets to the question of what the fuck is an independent? And I, as I wrote, Jesus, like you thirteen mean a years ago, constitutional conservative independent. Yeah, an indip- <laughs> it, it is a grand falloon, like like yeah. uh, like yeah. Kurt Vonnegut said. It is a proud and meaningless association of people. It's a bunch of political cowards mm-hmm. who don't who, who don't want to say how much they love Trump. Because mm-hmm. that'll make people mad, but they don't want to get this icky socialism on them, so they can't be Democrats. And so they, so Tom Nichols and Glenn Beck are basically the same person because mm-hmm. they're both independents, and therefore each is responsible for the actions of the other. And here endeth the lesson. Um, so actually, talk to I, me about what you said last night when I was so upset. I was yeah. so upset about you know abandoning our ten year effort and and Kristen Kirsten Gillibrand reminded me she's been working on this for ten years the family yep. leave yep and she's not um, done she's well, not done working on it but no. we're probably not going to get it in this framework well it's being dropped along with a lot of other things that we would like to have and um, the um the, the she it's it's chop wood carry water time yes it is you know it really really is and somebody quoted that back to me on social media uh, the other day <laughs> which made me very happy yeah and and. I did what every good husband does when his wife is upset. I quoted stuff my ex used to do. Oh, yeah. That's uh, always that, a good idea. Very helpful. Very, very helpful. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, when I was living in Chicago um, and married to uh, someone else, um, my ex was a uh, fanatic, a, a basketball fanatic, a Bulls fanatic. Um, Chicago team, Chicago people, makes perfect sense. Uh, Craig Hodges went to our high school. So, you know, there's there's connections there, deep, deep connections. And she was like really invested in the Bulls. Like I, I, I'm not invested in, in any sports events or individuals to that level ever, and never have been, never will be. But really, really, and um, it got to the point during the playoffs, especially where she would lose her mind um, as the game ebbed and flowed. And that's so hard in basketball because it's, it's two always, points every five seconds, always. right? <laughs> and and so we made sort of a rule. <laughs> um, that I kind of invented and, and, you know, you can't enforce a rule on somebody who doesn't want to have, have, have it enforced on them, but well, like stay out of the room until the last two minutes because mm-hmm. nothing matters until the last two minutes. You can catch all the cool plays and, 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 and Michael Jordan making insane shots on the highlight reel. Mm-hmm. But if you can't stand it, if it, if it makes you this freaked out. If you're going to break a tooth from just gritting your right. teeth so hard over then, the game. Then yeah. go away. Because mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter how hard you cheer. It doesn't matter if you tear your hair out. Right. None of it right. makes any difference to the ebb and flow of the game. And she's Come clearly back. not enjoying the ebb and no, flow of the game. It's, it's <laughs> agony. It's agony. Yes, right. Stay away until the last few seconds. Yeah. And that's when everything will be decided. Because mm-hmm. that's the way it always, unless it's a you know Olympic level blowout right. where you're winning by 40 points, which is, you know, fun to watch because ha ha ha. Um, just do yourself and your your stomach lining. <laughs> And your Mm -hmm. blood pressure a favor and go in the other room. Mm -hmm. I will tell you if anything happens. And really, I do have a friend that takes sleeping pills on election night and goes to bed at seven o'clock before the polls close because she'll, she'll lose her mind. She can't, she'll be crying, you know, when it, when there's nothing she can do about it at this point. Well, I have, I have seen Steve Kornacki in front of his big board going, coming up tomorrow. It's the Virginia governor's race. Yeah, There's yeah. no more important election in history. Be here for all the blows, all the information, all the round of the, 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 the U.S. for the 30 drag strip where the big ones ride, 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 ride. <laughs> and like, no, no, it's just an election. 
and you will know what happens after all the votes are counted. Well, and if you're on the ground or if you're doing postcards to voters, which a yeah. lot of people are doing. Yes. Or if you're, you know, get busy and do those hey. things. And if you're if you're in Virginia knocking on doors, absolutely. more power to you. Go, go do it. Go do it. And, and, and we are all behind you. But but living and dying on every you know pr- projected county count mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. no way to live. <laughs> It's, you know, and, unless, unless you can, you're Steve Kornacki or Junior Steve Kornacki dude. or Junior Dude. <laughs> junior who, Dude. Yeah. <laughs> who, who this morning was printing out um, congressional districts on right. the printer. Right. Doesn't. By, by, by red or blue. Yeah. Doesn't, Re, the doesn't redistricting's doesn't. a big deal, you know. He's so. got a whole map downstairs. A lot of yarn and tax are involved. Mm-hmm. Um, but my advice is the same, which as, as my advice to my ex regarding the game of basketball, which is please, if it if it hurts this much. To follow something over which you have no control. And every time someone says, you know what they're going to do? They're going to take away your children. Mm-hmm. And, and well, is it settled? Well, no, not really. But it could be. We don't know. It might happen. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Yeah, and you're getting pe- ulcers over it. Yeah. And the people who do know ain't talking. Yeah. And, and all of the negotiations that are happening behind closed doors, those are happening among people that, frankly, you and I hired to go do exactly that job. Go but in a room. They're being paid a lot more by other out. people to do something else, and, and that's the corruption is just in, in maddening. It's maddening. It's to me. maddening. But but a bunch of legislators closing the door and and work and punching each other out mm-hmm. and getting angry mm-hmm. on your behalf that mm-hmm. Joe Manchin is an asshole and Kristen Sinema mm-hmm. is a flake, and they're being paid off to to be basically Republican light to be Joe Lieberman. Mm-hmm. All of that is true. And there is not a fucking thing in the world you can do. All of the all of the urgent emails I'm getting, call your senator. I know what my senator is going to vote. Absolutely. <laughs> not going to change his mind. We, we have a senator with a baby. Yeah. <laughs> you know, our, we, our our senator has a baby and took some time off to have a baby. <laughs> do you think calling Rodney Davis, you know, is, <laughs> is going to do a damn bit of good? Of course I've not. I called Rodney Davis's office yeah. one time, and Rodney Davis's office still has the woman who owned this house in 2007 down on his list. That's how little he cares yeah, he doesn't care. about our, our, our house and what we think. <laughs> now, if you happen to be one of the four congressional districts in the universe with a, with a purple Congress person mm-hmm. who might tip one way or the other and your phone call might, that's great. You do that. Do that. That's a terrific thing. Stay in. We're not saying don't be involved. We're saying stay off television. Stay off the day to day, the day trading stock ticker That's world it. of politics. The day trading is so hard. It'll kill you. It's so hard. And, and I was it's... crying last. I was sitting in bed crying last night about paid family leave. And right. and just like, <laughs> and it was yesterday I had to drive somewhere. And I on the way back, um, Helen Reddy, I Am Woman came out. And I just went, fuck you, Helen Reddy. <laughs> we haven't gotten anywhere in 40 years. <laughs> I don't want to hear your shit, Helen Reddy. I don't Shut hear up. Your I Am Woman bullshit. <laughs> Wow. Wow. See, and, and I relax with a, with a, with a calm room, uh, setting the temperature to exactly 72 degrees and binge watching, <laughs> binge watching the Sopranos because you know, that's how, that's how I relax. Um, but you do know, yourself you know, a, gun smoke misses you. I, I know. And I miss gun smoke. I really do. Uh, but you know what? It's on the radio too. It's on the old station. I know. When you're so in the car, listen you it. listen to gun smoke. Yeah. I can listen to William Conrad. Oh my God. As, All right. Uh, Let's do a news roundup. Yeah, okay, let's do a news. Fine, fine. Senate Democrats dropped paid family and medical leave from Biden's Build Back Better spending package. And uh, Senator Gillibrand has been working on this for 10 years, and she's not done yet. Elect more Democratic women. Yes. Progressive women. That's the lesson. Not women. Democratic women. Yes. Progressive Democratic women. Yeah. Um, The state of Florida, you might have heard of, has stripped schools of federal aid for doing mask mandates. Because federal aid? They're not allowed aid. to do that. Well, they're doing it anyway. Yeah. They're saying, no, you can't have $170,000 because you're making DeSantis your kids wear masks. is going to lose. Yeah, I hope so. Yep. I surely hope so. Joe Biden has Biden once again. He refuses to exert executive privilege over documents that you know who has tried to keep away from the Congressional Committee investigating January 6th. White House counsel Dana Remus informed National Archivist David Ferrario that Biden has determined that an assertion of executive privilege is not in the best interests of the United States of America. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Deborah Burks, she of the 1,000 Scarfs, 
uh, who was the White House COVID response coordinator under Donald Trump, testified that the Trump administration, meaning her, could have prevented more than 130,000 American deaths during the early stages of the pandemic. But they didn't do it. And that is a crime against humanity for which Mm -hmm. those people should be tried. They're not going to be, but they certainly should be. Well, they are in Brazil. Yeah. They're getting ready to put him on trial. Bolasarna. Um, The U.S. issued its first passport with an X gender marker as part of an effort to implement gender inclusive policies. Yeah. Uh, Yes, we have no ambassadors today. Uh, Okay, we have four ambassadors. Uh, To date, only four of Joe Biden's nominees to be a U.S. ambassador to a foreign government have been approved by the Senate. Three of them just this week on Tuesday, which means that Biden is way behind Donald Trump, who at this point in his presidency had 22 U.S. ambassadors confirmed, 17 of them by voice vote. Guess why the delay? The delay stems from Republican senators led by Ted Cruz who want to pick a fight over some bullshit so they can have something to run on Fox News. On Fox News and all of the four that were approved, Mm -hmm. like Cindy McCain, were either former U.S. senators or wives of former U.S. senators. Yep. Club. Club members. It's people that they, yeah, that they know personally that they can't block. Right. Lauren Windsor is out there doing God's work. You may have seen her on the Rachel Maddow show this week as the liberal activist who targets Republicans with a MAGA masquerade by pretending to be like-minded. She has coaxed some pretty amazing confessions out of some of the worst Republicans, things they swear they don't believe or never supported while the camera is on them, and privately brag that they definitely believe and support when they think they're talking to a fellow traveler. For example, John Eastman talking about his uh, memo justifying Mike Pence stealing the election. Yep. Uh, and you can read all about this at Crooks and Liars, which is a wonderful website, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Driftlet. You're welcome. This is from the Washington Post. A team of Trump advisors and lawyers set up a war room at a D.C. hotel in an effort to overturn the 2020 election in the weeks leading up to the January 6th rally and attack on the Capitol by pro-Trump mob. The group, Rudy Giuliani, Steve Bannon, former NYC police chief Bernie Carrick, conservative lawyer John Eastman, one American news reporter Christina Bob, retired Army Colonel Phil Waldron, Boris Epstein, and others set out to pressure Pence into blocking or delaying certification of Biden's victory, while also publicizing alleged evidence of voter fraud and urging members of the state legislators to challenge and decertify their results. They call the set of rooms and suites at the Willard Hotel the Command Center, which is located a block from the White House. The Trump campaign later reimbursed Carrick's firm for more than $55,000 for rooms for the legal team. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yep. Bernie Carrick. Remember Bernie Carrick? Mm -hmm. Last time you heard of him, he was um, fucking Fucking his mistress mistress in a room reserved for 9-11 first responders. responders. Yes. Yeah. You know, and he was, of course, Giuliani's guy. Mm -hmm. Uh, The congressional panel investigating the January 6th uh, riot also cited Bannon's involvement at the war room organized at the Willard. And was Roger Stone there? I'm sure he was. Someone has to provide the hookers and blow. (laughs) From the Rolling Stone, organizers for the January 6th March for Trump and Stop the Steel rallies, so to speak, held dozens of planning meetings with members of Congress and White House staff. Marjorie Taylor Greene, Paul Gosar, Lauren Boebert, Mo Brooks, Madison Cawthorn, Andy Biggs, and Louis Gohmert, or their staffs were reportedly involved in planning conversations leading up to January 6th insurrection in which Trump supporters stormed the U.S. Capitol to object to the electoral certification. Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, was involved in the conversations surrounding the protests. Organizers also claim that Gosar offered them several assurances. Organizers also claim that Gosar offered them several assurances about a blanket pardon in an unrelated ongoing investigation to encourage them to plan the protests. No pardons were ultimately issued. And that's making a lot of people on that side mad. Yeah. And well, uh, apparently Ali Alexander is talking to the committee and cooperating. Mm-hmm. You know, they promised us we could get away with this shit. They promised us. Um, this is also from Crooks and Liars. What a great website. Uh, The Wall Street Journal has managed to piss off their own terrible reporters by insisting on publishing an insane election rant from Donald Trump that is full of flat out lies. Yeah. And and no editing. Just let it let it run because it's from Trump. We're just going to let it run. 
Uh, is it true that Rupert Murdoch owns the Wall Street Journal? Yeah, it and, is. And Fox News. He's also involved in that. And Fox the News New York thing? Post. Wow. Golly, yeah. it's like one guy. If that guy, one guy disappeared from history 30 years ago, we would all yeah. be much better off. Much yeah. better place, yeah. Yep. This week on Jen Psaki Presents, uh, Jen Psaki ate an anti-choice reporter named Owen Jensen for brunch live on camera and spit out the bones. Wilson works for an outfit called the Eternal Word Television Network and for the umpteenth time demanded to know if Biden was going to discuss all the liberal baby murdering with the Pope. <laughs> It was then that Saki settled into what appeared to be a satisfying nosh. Yeah, she just... You know, even the Pope has said, if we're going to pretend like abortion is the only moral issue facing the church, mm -hmm. uh, I'm against it. <laughs> I'm yeah. against that. Well, and Jen Psaki, th that was my you know comedic take on it, but Jen mm -hmm. Psaki literally just kept answering, you know, there's a lot of overlap between the Pope's beliefs and the White House. We believe in, you know poverty and health and all these other things and climate and, change and yeah and and answering over and over again I, we've already talked about this every time you're you you know sit your ass in this room you always ask about this stupid abortion shit and i always give you the same answer and just talked right over him and blah mm -hmm. blah blah next question but she really i gotta say she is the best press secretary i have ever seen i've ever seen i yeah. just i cannot tell you how uh effective she is at making people like me happy and how how, well, and and the way SNL portrayed it, which yeah. is how how did you do that sake bomb? She said facts. <laughs> yeah, and how how sort of effortlessly and calmly yeah. she just just puts one right through the heart. You mm -hmm. know, they mm -hmm. don't they don't collapse and go away, but it is so clear that if you simply approach these people openly with the cameras rolling with facts on your side, um, there's no doubt who wins that debate. Um, in you mean we can't even be Nazis on our own time? News? U.S. Customs and Border Protection determined that 60 of their agents engaged in misconduct and were subject to discipline after sharing violent and obscene posts in secret Facebook groups, now called Meta. The Meta. CBP <laughs> Discipline Review Board recommended firing 24 agents for, quote, serious misconduct, including an agent who posted offensive images of an alt-right and white supremacist symbol and sexualized images of a member of Congress. And I think posting sexy images of Chuck Grassley is out of bounds, and we shouldn't do that. I'm, I'm on the record at that. Another uh, Crooks and Liars post. This is something I wrote this week. Um, mm -hmm. Apparently, Tuesday was Give the Dummies a Microphone Day <laughs> at the U.S. <laughs> House of Representatives. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they all had speeches to give. And this is just a little roundup. Um, Representative Chip Roy was furious that pharm pharmacies won't fill his ivermectin prescription. Mm -hmm. No no word on where he uh, got that prescription. Madison Cawthorn, this is on the same day, by the way. Madison Cawthorn repeated completely debunked lies about Anthony Fauci on the floor of the House. Was Fauci killing puppies again? Yeah, and that, well, that's been debunked, completely debunked. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. even the same agency, and it's not something that's under Fauci. And the photo they're showing uh, is apparently dogs getting fixed um and and not in the country that they say it is so it's so, all uh, lies all yeah, of it all is lies. lies madison all Cawthorn lies. told a bunch of lies yeah mm -hmm. yeah um one of my favorite dummies in the <laughs> in the republican caucus glenn grothman who i think lived with his mother until like she died five years ago or so he's 66 years old never married no kids but he stood up to tell the families of America that stay-at-home moms solve their child care problems by staying at home. Yeah. Yeah. We don't Is need pre-K because stay-at-home parents. Based yeah. on my extensive experience living in my mom's basement, uh, yeah. Mr. Norman Bates says, who needs a child who care needs program? Who needs pre-K? We don't need mm -hmm. pre-K. Moms will take care of it. Mom took Mother. care of me until I was 41. Yeah. Mother, no. Blood. Yeah. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Bob Good of Virginia, when they actually started talking about a topic, which was domestic violence prevention, um, he claimed that, uh, yes, domestic violence plagues our society and is a result of failing to follow God's rules for and definition of marriage. Right. Uh, and uh, no roundup of Republican congressional idiocy would be complete without a mention of Virginia Fox. Oh, I miss her so much. <laughs> she, oh, you can't miss her. She's no. there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And she told her colleagues that Joe Biden is to blame for domestic violence, while mm -hmm. at the same time she voted no on the Violence Against Women Act. Yeah. Well, I remember doing a Photoshop of her. all in one day. And it's because 
that's the rules in the house to give the minorities time to give a speech, you know? Well, and, and do the math. Uh, I remember doing a Photoshop of her um, mm -hmm. and a bunch of other idiots in, in the Republican Party climbing all over Barack Obama as kindergarten cop. Uh -huh. That was two administrations ago. Yeah. Which means that the people in her district keep electing her over Six and or over seven and times. over yeah. again yeah. because yeah. they like the fact that this dumb is their representative in Washington and don't feel in, at least a bit embarrassed when she stands up and says stupid shit on the floor of Congress. Absolutely. So the yeah. problem is really the people in her district are terrible people and, and should be treated as such by the rest of the nation. Um, well, and she, uh, you know, will be in charge of the Hunter Biden laptop investigations. If we lose the house in 2022, Yep, she'll be on the committee. I'm sure. So now, look forward to that. In local news, um, I came across this in our terrible local paper, which, again, is four pages of obituaries and sports. Um, but there were a couple of stories in the paper this week that I thought I'd bring to your attention because it raises the question, when is a story about Democrats in disarray not a story? Hmm. And the answer is when it's two stories that are actually the same story. And they both suck. Um on the front page of our local Republican rag, the State Journal Register, on Wednesday, October 27th, 2001, the headline is Billionaire Tax Panned. Oh, my God. The billionaire tax is being panned by people in Congress. And then you read down a little bit, and it's like, well, Democrats have an idea to pay for stuff with uh, billionaire tax. And some people are criticizing it as too cumbersome, and there's a fight going on among Democrats over how to do this and how to pay for things. And it's basically, no, this is how legislation works. This is not some, you know, this is not a screaming headline, except it's Democrats in disarray. But, and you don't even know who objects to it. There's a, the whole thrust of the article is, is this program is so controversial that it's gotten everyone in a tizzy. And except it never mentions, you know, who's in the tizzy and what they think. And the reason this jumped out at me was, if you simply go to the inside section of the newspaper and pick up the news and world section, um, there's a separate and distinct story entitled Idea for Billionaire Tax Faces Sharp Criticism, which is, in the first three paragraphs, exactly the same story that was on the front page. Because why not have two stories about Democrats in disarray? But one is AP and the other is USA Today, right? No. They're both AP. They're both written by the same person. It's literally the same article. Oh my gosh. By, and someone didn't someone pasting that together didn't notice. Well, except they changed some of the, the wording in the third paragraph to make it a separate story. Oh in, my on the, god. On the front page. But they made it into two stories about Democrats in disarray. And you have to well, read and down. Everybody hates everybody hates increasing taxes on billionaires. Everybody. Right. It, every, right? It's terrible. I, I I can't sleep at night over the thought no. of billionaires paying more in taxes. It, it it bothers me way down in my soul. I have nightmares about it. And you have to read again, it's just it's just people doing legislation, arguing over how to tax and who to tax and how much and whatnot. It's it's basic stuff. It's not the end of the fucking world, except the headline on both stories, which is the same story, are all about how ideas for billionaire taxes face sharp criticism. And you have to get to the ninth paragraph on the second story to find out the person, the only person they're quoting who's saying this is terrible was a guy named Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell, uh -huh. who called it a harebrained scheme <laughs> and warned of revenues drying up during downturns. Some Republicans indicated that such a tax plan could be challenged in court. And that's it. That's, that's the it. controversy. There's no named Democrat who's who's up in arms and threatening to burn the place down if we tax billionaires. We kind of know who they're talking about. But this is reporting on an ongoing negotiation between Democrats because the Republican Party is a different species, a, a, a democracy-hating mm -hmm. monster mm -hmm. that won't cooperate with anything except, you know, burning the country to the ground. Mm -hmm. Well, but, and I have another example of that. The fact is that when you have that kind of unprofessionalism and gap I, what's the word i'm looking for hole <laughs> it you know this 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 vapid hole in actual news mm -hmm. and this is how they're going to put it together for consumption sure that vacuum which is the word i'm looking for is easily filled by the right they just okay. come in and there was a story on uh because we track stories from uh, judicial watch which is nothing but a chop shop 
that does propaganda. They file mm-hmm. fake lawsuits and do FOIA requests. And then they do issue a press release from their FOIA request. Right. And OAN picks it up and OAN runs with it. And so the latest story was uh, Judicial Watch does a FOIA request to the park police about January 6th and finds out from their FOIA request that the park police were expecting 20,000 protesters on January 6th. That's all they found out. The park police expected 20,000 protesters. That's Uh, it. And that should be the end of story. Right. But the way OAN phrased it was, Judicial Watch reported that Nancy Pelosi needs to be investigated for the lack of preparation on the half behalf of the park police. And this shows that Democrats were unprepared for the, for January 6th. And it's their negligence that led to violence. Well, it's an old trick. This is, this is yeah. Donald Trump's entire strategy to get yeah. reelected, which was yeah. let's, let me, let me put my foot on the neck of Ukraine. Mm-hmm. Just, I just need you to announce you're doing an investigation. You don't need to do shit. Just right. announce it so I can run with it and say, see the Biden family are corrupt. Mm-hmm. They're being investigated. That's all I need from you people. Mm-hmm. And then you'll get all the aid. And it's, you know, it's the same fucking tact. It's the right. reason they had the Hillary Clinton hearings. Right. Was to, to coax out of her one sentence they could use on Fox News. Well, and if we lose the House, and God forbid we lose the House, but if mm-hmm. we do, I think Hunter Biden needs to march right up there and testify for 11 hours in a tuxedo. Sure. <laughs> and well, No, I think he, I think he needs to wear um, a Melania Trump I don't oh, yeah, care. Jacket. I don't really care to you. Put his feet up on the desk and just sit there say, going. I totally care. Yeah. And, and <laughs> I care about drug addiction and put, I was a drug addict and I'm right. in recovery. And let me show you my book about how I'm in recovery. And well, maybe was that say, was my laptop. I did a lot of terrible things while I was on drugs and I really want people to get clean. Let's talk mm-hmm. about that. <laughs> did I put M&Ms on my junk? Yes, I did. We yes, call did. that, we call that doing a gates uh in, in the trade it's that's what it's known as <laughs> matt gates it's matt a matt gates, gates. Mm-hmm. <laughs> i yeah. thought it was a a, a tucker <laughs> yeah it's a rusty tucker a when rusty you put them on your tucker. ass when you put it on your ass it's a rusty tucker um <laughs> but let's let's get all the secrets out now shall we and just yeah. put your feet up on the desk light up a joint and say yeah let's talk about what donald trump was doing getting pissed Virginia on by Fox, next question yeah <laughs> Virginia Fox, didn't I see you at that mask party the other day mm-hmm. doing uh, doing doing the pop- Rusty Tucker <laughs> doing poppers running around the dildo strapped to your head going, I'm a golden god. Didn't, wasn't that you? You know, because why not make a mockery of the mockery they're trying to make? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Drift Bass. You're welcome. You made me laugh again well, during I a do. hard week. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is Jewel. Mm -hmm. Jewel was sent to us by our angel nerd, Tammy, who got the picture of Jewel from her friend, Sue Ann. And uh, Jewel has been on the Biden bus from the start and is not about to jump off. Jewel insists that the box he uses is only freshly scooped. (gasps) A a product tie-in. too. Yeah, we do. We definitely do. Yeah. Freshly scooped cat litter. I can see a future for that product. (laughs) Freshly scooped. Freshly scooped. I won't poop unless it's freshly scooped. (laughs) So true. So true. And of course, Jewel eats freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve Pet Store Perfection or Dollar Store Direct, your cats will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. You can visit Jewel at our Facebook page or website. And you can send your internet kitty, dog, or other pet, barnyard, animal, whatever you have. Send it to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We do love hearing from you. It makes our week to hear from you. Adds to our mental health to hear from you. So (laughs) feel free to write us. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag Jail DeJoy. And, you know, usually Thanksgiving weekend, we do a letter show. Yeah, I think it might be a good time to do that again this year. So I think so. I'll make up some letters. Feel free to send in our letter, your letters. 
Hmm? You mean real letters from people? I, I usually just make them up and no. answer them myself. No, I'm talking oh. about real, real notes, oh. real letters. Oh. We love hearing from you. Uh, we'll do a letter show on Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah. Uh, feel free to write us and let us know how you're doing, what you're thinking, etc. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job, and it's a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution you can, too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Don't forget, driftglass.blogspot.com is having a birthday fundraiser this weekend. Happy birthday, Drift Glass. I love you. I love you, too. Please share our show on social media. And if you love this podcast, please get someone else to listen, too. And thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties are excited to announce that from now on, all cats will be known as Super Duper Meta. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional F Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2021 DGBG Productions.